Hi. Well, it's December 1st. Yes, I'm going to give the date. Uh, had a rough few days, actually, for a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, watching what's going on in the world just... You know, some people say, you know, why bother yourself with it? Why don't you just relax because there's nothing you can do with it? There was a Greek philosopher, and I forget his name, and, I, and I've actually quoted this before, so I should have his name ready for uh, you know information all the time but anyway some of you will recall this you may not be interested in politics but politics is always interested in you what got me going well I just sent an email out to some friends and family here just a couple of days ago and I wasn't really sure I wanted to do a video I I'm really getting kind of away from that now because as I said before I put so much out already and there's so many other good people out there that keep you up on the things that are mat that, that matter if you take the time to do it. And you shouldn't do that so much to worry. You know, it's not to worry. It's to prepare. It's so that you can help people. And you should look at it that way. Help people through all these things that are coming. Uh, you know, if you haven't been paying attention to what Obamacare uh, has been doing to the country and what it's going to do, you know, that you, you really need to... To inform yourself and I know most of you do but anyway I sent out an email uh, a few days ago because I, I, I was looking through the web as I normally do and I found an article in the Washington Post by Charles Krauthammer I believe that's how you say his name uh, a conservative guy yes but you know he doesn't I don't think he's a party liner I don't think he buys into the left-right paradigm especially when you read what he says and I, I want you to see the link below as usual. I'm not going to give a whole lot of information about that. But basically, he calls it lawlessness, the, the outbreak of lawlessness. And it's about lawlessness in high places in the government. Now, he says there's an outbreak of lawlessness, but this has been going on for a long time. You know, the planned false flags during, during Kennedy's administration, not by Kennedy. He actually, of course, put a stop to it. All of the things that have happened to get into wars and the bank bailouts and, you know, avoiding the Constitution. You know, they take an oath to support and defend the Constitution, the, the president and the, and the Congress and everybody else that holds an office, law enforcement, things like that. And, and then these, these people just break it, uh, break the law, uh, break that oath as a matter of course, you know, and it, it's troubling. And, and I'm not going to go into it a lot because all of you already know this. But I, I want to ask you to go look at this article by Charles Krauthammer if you haven't done so. And the link is below. So uh, basically he's talking about how, you know, they, they pass this Affordable Care Act and then they're doing everything but obeying the law in getting it changed. They're doing it by fiat, by dictatorship, you know, which is, you know, not lawful in this country. I don't care what you, I don't care who you are or what you are. You can't do that, that kind of thing. Uh, administrations and operations that's one thing but statutory law no you just can't by fiat by dic dictate change it at your whim and I don't care who you are you can't do that so anyway Krauthammer talks about it I'd like you to see that another thing I saw the last few days and you know I I told you all about people like Charles uh, like uh, Christopher Green and and Ben Swan, and of course, you know, James Corbett, and you know, all these different people I refer to all the time for to, to go get information. Uh, but you know, I have a lot of respect for people like Judge Andrew Napolitano, who comes out with some really good things. He's very, very much aware of what's going on and talks about it all the time. I'm surprised Fox News keeps him, <laughs> actually. But uh, I'm glad he's out there because he always has the voice of reason and constitutionality behind it. And when I say constitution, I'm not, I'm not a dyed-in-the-wool dyed guy who says, oh, it has to be this way. I understand things can change, but the basics of the Bill of Rights are non-negotiable in my, in my book. And unfortunately, that's where so many of the really dangerous changes are being made. But anyway, another person that's out there besides Andrew Napolitano, I just came up with it and I, I'm going to mention him. His name's Chuck Smith. Uh, he has a YouTube site called Chuck, then in parentheses, Smith Fix, close parentheses, Smith. Uh, he has a website and some other things, but just look up Chuck Smith, Smith Fix. Uh, 
I'm really impressed with what he's done here. He's from Texas. Uh, we've already communicated. Uh, I wasn't aware of him until just yesterday, maybe the day before. Uh, and we've already communicated and I look forward to talking with him some more. You know, a lot of these folks, you know, they're saying that, you know, we're, we're getting to the point where we're going to have to defend ourselves and defend our families. And, and you know, it's not always from overt violence. Uh, you know, tyranny is subtle at first. And the problem is, is that when they force you to do it by the point of a gun, the threat of a point of a gun, you know, you, you kind of you kind of feel like you got to go on with it or else, right? Well, at, a, at some point in time, that can change. And I think that's what Chuck Smith is talking about. And, and I think that there are reasons, like I've said, to prepare to defend yourselves. Not to do uh, overt action, not to go on the offensive. Um, but, you know, if somebody wants to fight, you know, give them what they want. Just be aware that, you know, when that does happen, if it happens, God forbid, but unfortunately any of us who are watching this know that, you know, it's it's part of the end game. When it when it happens, you, you have to defend yourself. You have to. And there might be other ways of defending yourself rather than just waiting for someone to come and knock your door down. Remember I talked about Alexander Solzhenitsyn when he said, and I'm not quoting this exactly, but he said, you know, we could have put the fear in those officers if every time they went out, they didn't know if they'd come home because we'd be waiting for them with hammers and sickles and axes and things like that. You know, the police and the military, you got to wake up, as I've said, and a lot of people have said, you know, you're supposed to be on the people's side, not this illicit, illegal government. They try to, you know, I talk to police and military all the time now, and I have for years, and they think that it's what they're told to do that is constitutional. In other words, just the fact that they're being ordered that that's okay to do. Well, no, you have to understand the oath that you take. Study it out. Understand especially that Bill of Rights. Wow, well, I'm repeating myself as I so often have. The point is, I want you to go to take a look at Chuck Smith's site. I think he's doing a very professional job. His website's great. He has a blog, uh, a radio show. Uh, like I say, we're going to be talking some more. Feinstein says that the U.S. is less safe today than it was two years ago. You know, these people just always are out there for this fear to make you give them more power. <sighs> Why is terrorism on the rise in the world? Because the United States, number one, is funding it, supplying it. And because of what we do, we bomb these drugs. Chuck Smith shows this on his site. These drugs are killing all these women and children. And men, too, that aren't even, you know, part of terrorist organizations. You know, terrorism is, is being cultivated because of what we are doing. We're not defending ourselves. We're aggressively warring on other people. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I think that's just worn out now. No, most people just aren't listening. I tell people the government funds Al-Qaeda and they want to laugh at me or argue, oh no, no, our government couldn't do that. Oh no, Obama would never do that. It's true. Iran, you know, they want to make this big thing about Iran. Do you know, and I talked about this a long time ago too, we overthrew Mossadegh in 1954, 53, 55, somewhere in there, I forget the exact date. The, we're the ones that started this thing, and then we conveniently forget about it. You know, Iran was a great place before we put the Shah in there, and then he caused all kinds of problems, secret police, you know, all this stuff, killing people. I remember, you know, Come to think about that, I was a police officer and we had some Iranians killed that I investigated and it, it was probably done by the Iranians, or, yeah, the Iranian secret police, the Shah secret police here in the States. Yeah, I've been around this stuff for a long time. Uh, anyway, Feinstein says that, you know, we have to do more to make, make us safe. <sighs> Folks, you know the old axiom and I'll just say it again. If you want freedom and security, you're not going to get either one. Not unless you do it yourself. This government's not going to do it. Every, every little chance they get to take a little bit more, that's what they do. These people, I mean, look at the banker situation, you know? <laughs> By the way, that's another thing that's coming out. Paul Craig Roberts had a great article out today, and he talks about the new plan that they've hatched. 
you know and I, I'm not going to go into it to any great deal but the point is, is that of course the banks are now going to make you pay to have your money deposited with them that's part of this thing he was talking about the end result of all this is to, is to take away all of your wealth all of it and put it in the hands of the already super rich and everybody driving around and having a good time I mean you got to enjoy yourself you got to have time to relax to enjoy family friends all those things have your have your hobbies but if you don't take a little time to fight for your freedom liberty and yes there is a difference between freedom and liberty I, I have a tendency to go with liberty because I think people liberty uh, means a, a type of freedom but with responsibility okay true freedom is kind of like anarchy that's why I don't use the term very much uh, there is a difference but anyway uh, freedom with responsibility would equal liberty okay freedom with a, a respect to other people's rights and and that is liberty the restrictions on it. you know liberty freedom is is defined as you know your freedom ends at my nose so you don't have absolute complete freedom you have to worry about how to take you know respect other people's rights so I, I like the term liberty and I'm going to continue to use that now I throw fr freedom out there once in a while but I think you get the idea <laughs> all right where were we well New York and California are in the middle of gun confiscation uh, some of you have probably seen the the letters that the New York uh, police agencies have sent out uh, to say that if, if you have any of these these weapons that have capability of more than so many rounds that you have to turn them into the police and that includes shotguns that have not just detachable bot well you know if, if you have any way of carrying more than five rounds in in the weapon this is this is out of hand and it, you know everybody was saying it was going to go here uh, in Colorado the sheriffs have been told that they can't sue the, the the state over over the gun laws there but of course the people are recalling the people that cause this and probably reverse this but it's going to take some time but the sheriffs of course they have every right maybe not to to challenge the law but certainly not enforce it and to refuse anybody to, to enforce it in their in their county so I hope they continue to do that California yeah if you have a medical problem uh, um, that could be considered mental or stress related or whatever they're confiscating guns there at gunpoint they're going around taking them from people so without due process without fourth amendment rights without a right to trial by jury before your property is taken from you they just come off and take it because of these administrative things see how these work administration and operations are for how a, 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 an organization conducts itself in its day-to-day -day operations internally okay that's what really executive orders are supposed to be all right but when you start infringing on the rights on the property of of people you must use due process and these governments that are trying to get away without doing this they're criminals okay by our constitution they are criminals people you got to start fighting back on this stuff I guess I can talk easy because I live in you know basically states that, that allow uh, you know Second Amendment you know at least don't leave your guns where you can, they can get them okay if, if you're if you're in your house and, and you think you might be one of these people vets for sure are you kidding me yeah you, you've had PTSD you've had medication they're coming for your weapons they're doing that in California okay don't leave them where they can find them remember your you know your centuries that I was telling you about you know getting together which brings up another point remember Oath Keepers you know keepers is under attack as a matter of fact I'm gonna put that under under here as well with links to that why Oath Keepers is under attack because they expect military and police to honor their oaths of office to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights so they're under attack okay uh, that'd be nice to listen to that I sure give you a lot of stuff but there's another one where where uh, uh, Stuart Rhodes talks about uh, you know getting ready you know the solutions to getting ready and that the link on that's down below as well and you also already know about as civilian uh, preservation teams that are modeled under the under the 18 well anyway I, I'm, I'm going on a lot of things here I didn't really mean to do that of course I always say that uh, I'm not giving you a whole lot of new information today mainly because I as I said before you know it's all out there I'll, once your eyes are open if you just look and see you, you don't need to, to figure it out this this whole deal between Israel and Saudi Arabia to 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 go after Iran 
I hope you understand that's a smoke screen. I hope you understand that. See, the United States and the military industrial complex of the United States wants war in Iran. You know, they kind of got messed up in Syria because people were waking up. But they're going to do it this way, okay? They're going to cause this other thing. Get your mind off of Obamacare and off the banks and all that because of what's going on over there. And then, you know, they're going to get Iran. Uh, they're going to do it eventually because it has to do with oil as everything else. The Saudis, you know, they're... They know that Iran is not going to use the almighty dollar. And the Saudis might stop that too eventually here, you know, under the circumstances. But at any rate, they want to be in control. Anyway, this whole thing's a smokescreen. Saudi Arabia and Israel agreeing to go against Iran? Hope you understand the difference between Shiites and Sunnis and Wahhabists. I hope you understand what those are. Shiites, Iran, and Sunnis, Saudi Arabia, don't like each other. Not all Muslims are the same. Just like in Christianity, there's a lot of differences. Going back to what George Bush, Bush said, you're either with us or you're with the terrorists. Understand now all the definitions of terrorists, not just Islamic fundamentalist extremists, not just Al-Qaeda, again, funded by the U.S. government, but conservatives, constitutionalists, Christians, vets, Second Amendment advocates, and on and on and on. It will soon be people that refuse to, to sign up for Obamacare because of the, the invasions of their privacy and, and their rights because of that situation. So basically what George Bush, all of those Republicans who just love George Bush and think he'd be the answer today or he was so great, he was telling you that he's setting it up so that if you dissent you are a terrorist. You can't You can't even dissent without being considered a terrorist. Look at what the NSA is doing. Gathering information. I'm sure that they're going to get this video, as they have most of my others, and, and everybody else that's involved in this. Which brings me to my last point. And this is where it gets serious. I'm hoping that you're choosing a side. That you choose in your heart to do good, not to do evil. And yes, you can awake to a consciousness of knowing the difference. Liberty, life, love is on the good side. Slavery, hate, death, fear, it's on the bad side. I warn you, but I don't want you to be fearful. I just want you to prepare. So, you must awaken to your awful situation. We, all of us, must awaken to our awful situation. Shun wrongdoing. Clean up your lives. <laughs> you know, and people say, well, really, right? Yeah, well, what about the way you have sex? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know what? What we do in our bedroom with our loved ones, that's our business. It's when we go out and we start trying to force that on others. And we've kind of been there before, okay? We all have our little idiosyncrasies and the things that we need to deal with in our, in our minds and our hearts. But as long as we're not really hurting anybody, you know, it's okay. It works itself out in the end, okay? So, back again to the old things. I'm not blackmailable, guys. Okay, put that stuff away you've been sending me. Just, you know. <laughs> yeah, it is. I told you once before, okay? I know who you are. I know what you do. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. All right? You're Satan. You're Satan. You, you are. You are the evil ones. And you work for the evil ones. You, you don't talk about the issues. You, you resort to name calling and character assassination, you know. <laughs> And if people succumb to that, they deserve to be stupid. Okay? That's all right with me. You know, whatever. Awaken to our awful situation. Not just here in the United States, but that's our home. And we got to clean up our home first if we can. But this has to be a worldwide thing. I really do believe that that junk DNA, quote-unquote junk DNA of ours, is for 
a lot more than the scientists had been willing to admit in the past. And I've talked about this before. I think there is an awakening. I think there is light. All right. A lot of you laugh because you know, well, DNA. Wow, well, that's that's kind of new age. That's kind of that's kind of weird stuff. That's that's really crazy. That's out of out of this world. Your argument is like the people that, that talk about global warming. They want to refuse to admit that the sun has any influence on global warming. Why would they do that when it's obvious? Because they don't want to admit that light has a special purpose for us. Okay? So light does influence you. You know, Jesus called himself the light of truth. Light, awakening your eyes. And a lot of people will try to equate that with Lucifer. But there is a difference, okay? There's a difference between using light knowledge for murder and gain, okay? And light and knowledge for love and for the advancement of our of our people peaceably. There is a difference. All right. One last time, please awaken to your awful situation and listen to the whisperings of your heart, your conscience, and act accordingly. Out here.